In a discussion recently, the practice or the concept of offering oneself as a victim soul came up and uh, we were discussing it with Jeanne Curie who comes over to do the School of Mary and I thought the discussion was very interesting because it was something that uh, I I had heard, heard about many years ago, people making this very generous offer to be a victim soul. Now, anybody looking at my channel, this is not something that you should do. Uh, it's not something that you should go out and say, Lord, I want to be a victim soul and I offer myself to you as a victim soul. Uh, and if a spiritual director is telling you to do this, I would seriously question that spiritual director's preparation. And uh, I just thought I would link in something that Jeanne mentioned and that I remember many years ago being mentioned by St. Therese of Lisieux so that people can, um, you know, see what she thought about it because she also wanted to do this, but then uh, she also heard about this, but didn't feel inclined to be offer herself as a victim soul uh, and then to be inflicted with all these sufferings that come along with it and said, well, is this the life that I'm going to live? Uh, although she did suffer, uh, you know, at the end she did suffer, but uh, she had this fascinating way of seeing something far deeper in that offering of herself and I just wanted to read this out to you because I do think it's 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 interesting and it's something that we're all called to do this is the type of of offering of oneself that every Catholic can do today wherever you are and you can actually grow in this you can practice it and grow in it especially any seminarian in Ireland or religious in Ireland you need to do this this is your calling. This is what you are called to offer to Christ every single day. Anyway, I'm just going to read this out. It's from the School of Mary website. This is um, Jeanne Curie who has been helping us with this. Uh, a wealth of knowledge. I did it. It did sit in my my um, memory a lot on Saturday when we were talking about this and I said I'm going to do a video on this because it's so important for our Christian life it's this offering that we can give that Christ is calling us to do to be to receive his love and everybody should be doing this anyway I'm just going to read this out for you and then I'm going to post a link to it below because there's some more questions and answers in it and you can read them and if you want to do the school of Mary I'm I highly highly recommend it highly recommend it love it absolutely beautiful experience to to uh, to uh, be part of this hopefully if somebody's interested maybe somebody would lead the school of Mary in Dublin I can't do it because I live the other side of Ireland, if somebody wanted to lead uh, eight days over the next next year sometime in Dublin, reach out to me and get a group together. It's it's well worth it, guys. It's well worth it. Anyway, I'm just going to read this out for you. The Act of Oblation. Introduction to the Act of Oblation to Merciful Love from the Autobiography of St. Therese of the Child Jesus. This year... June 9th, 1895, the Feast of the Most Holy Trinity, I received the grace to understand more than ever before how much Jesus desires to be loved. I was thinking about the souls who offer themselves as victims of God's justice in order to turn away the punishments reserved for sinners, drawing them upon themselves. This offering seemed great and very generous to me, but I was far from feeling attracted to making it. From the depths of my heart I cried out, O oh my God, will your justice alone find souls willing to immolate themselves as victims? Does not your merciful no love need them too? On each side this love is unknown, rejected. Those hearts upon whom you would lavish it turn to creatures seeking happiness from from them with their miserable affection. They do this instead of throwing themselves into your arms and accepting your infinite love. O oh my God, 
Is your disdained love going to remain closed up within your heart? It seems to me that if you were to find souls offering themselves as victims of Holocaust to your love, you would consume them rapidly. It seems to me too that you would be happy not to hold back the waves of infinite tenderness within you. If your justice loves to release itself, this justice which extends over the earth, how much more does your merciful love desire to set souls on fire? since your mercy reaches to the heavens. O oh my Jesus, let me be this, vic this happy victim to consume your holocaust with the fire of your divine love. You permitted me, dear mother, to offer myself in this way to God, and you know the rivers, or rather the oceans of graces that flooded my soul. Ah, since that since the happy day it seems to me that love penetrates and surrounds me that at each moment this merciful love renews me purifying my soul and leaving no trace of sin within it and i need not i need have no fear of purgatory i know that of myself i would not merit even to enter that place of expiation since only holy souls can have entrance there but i also know that the fire of love is more sanctifying than is the fire of purgatory i know that jesus cannot desire useless offerings for us and that he would not inspire the longings i feel unless he wanted to grant them oh how sweet is the way of love how I want to apply myself to doing the will of God always with the greatest self-surrender. Here, dear mother, is all I can tell you about the life of your little Therese. You know better than I do what she is and what Jesus has done for her. You will forgive me for having abridged my religious life so much. How will this story of a little white flower come to an end? Perhaps the little flower will be plucked in her youthfulness, youthful freshness or else transplanted to other shores. I don't know. But what I am certain about is that God's mercy will accompany her always, that it will never cease blessing the dear mother who offered her to Jesus. She will rejoice eternally at being one of the flowers of her crown. And with this dear mother, she will sing eternally the new canticle of love. Act of Oblation to Merciful Love Offering myself as a victim of Holocaust to God's merciful love. O oh my God, most blessed Trinity, I desire to love you and make you loved, to work for the glory of Holy Church for saving souls on earth and liberating those suffering in purgatory. I desire to accomplish your will perfectly and to reach the degree of glory you have prepared for me in your kingdom. I desire in a word to be a saint, but I feel my helplessness and I beg you O oh my God, to be yourself my sanctity. Since you loved me so much as to give me your only Son as my Saviour and my spouse, the infinite treasures of his merits are mine. I offer them to you with gladness, begging you to look upon me only in the face of Jesus and in his heart burning with love. I offer you too all the merits of the saints in heaven and on earth, their acts of love and those of the holy angels. Finally, I offer you, O blessed Trinity, the love and merits of the blessed Virgin, my dear mother. It is to her I abandon my offering, begging her to present it to you, her divine son, my beloved spouse, told us, in the days of his mortal life, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you.
I am certain then you will grant my desires. I know, oh my God, that the more you want to give, the more you make us desire. I feel in my heart immense desires and it is with confidence I ask you to come and take possession of my soul. Ah, I cannot receive communion as often as I desire, but Lord, are you not all powerful? Remain in me as in a tabernacle and never separate yourself from your little victim. I want to console you with for, for the ingratitude of the wicked and beg of you to take away my freedom to displease you. If through weakness I sometimes fall, make your divine glance cleanse my soul immediately, consuming all my imperfections like the fire that transforms everything into itself. I thank you, O oh my God, for all the graces you have granted me, especially the grace of making me pass through the crucible of suffering. It is with joy I shall contemplate you on the last day carrying the scepter of your cross, since you deign to give me share in this very precious cross. I hope in heaven to resemble you and to see shining in my glorified body the sacred stigmata of your passion. After earth's exile, I hope to go and enjoy you in the fatherland. But I do not want to lay up merits for heaven. I want to work for your love alone and with one purpose of pleasing you, consoling your sacred heart and saving souls who will love you eternally. In the evening of this life, I shall appear before you with empty hands, for I do not ask you, Lord, to count my works. All our justice is stained in your eyes. I wish then to be clothed in your own justice and to receive from your love the eternal possession of yourself. I want no other throne, no other crown, but you, my beloved. Time is nothing in your eyes, and a single day is like a thousand years. You can then, in one instant, prepare me to appear before you. In order to live in one single act of perfect love, I offer myself as a victim of Holocaust to your merciful love, asking you to consume me incessantly, allowing the waves of infinite tenders shut up within you to overflow into my soul and that thus I can become a martyr of your love, O oh my God. May this martyrdom, after having prepared me to appear before you, finally cause me to die and may my soul take flight without any delay into the eternal embrace of your merciful love. I want, O oh my beloved, at each beat of my heart to renew this offering to you an infinite number of times until the shadows having disappeared I am able to tell you of my love in an eternal face to face. Marie-Francois Therese of the Child Jesus and the Holy Face Unworthy Carmelite Religious This ninth day of June Feast of the Most Holy Trinity in the year of grace 1895 that is a beautiful act of oblation you know to offering yourself to to christ that saint therese speaks about in her in her uh, autobiography which jan curry has put on his website and he's got some questions and answers in there so i'm going to put a link below you can go to school of mary and you can read what jan has spoken about in the world today especially in our society, what people need to see in us is reflected Christ's love. You know, so I do encourage people to make that act of oblation, that offering yourself to receive Christ's love, you know, to enter into that friendship with Christ and to be a reflection of his light. Think of it as Christ wanting, giving you, wants to give you a mirror and he wants you to carry this mirror, which will reflect his light. So you're, on, you're not worthy for this gift. None of us are worthy for this gift. But Christ is saying, I want you 
to carry this light, this gift, and to give it to others to help them to come to me. Because if we if we're looking for the people that are worthy to to uh, talk about Christ's love, well, we'll all fall short. We're all sinners, and it's really, really, really important. You know, when I was doing the cursio in Derry, I spoke about this p- before, um, and I do encourage people to actually go up and do the cursio weekend. Something that impacted me a lot was to see the men that were transformed. And they would go out and help others. So in some way, shape or form, they understood this encounter of Christ's love. And they said, well, I, I want to go out and, and help others. You know, I've, I've received something. I felt being loved by Christ and I want to go and help others. And, 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 and you can see this ripple effect happening in the lives of, you know, one story that impacted me a lot was a man that went out to a, 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 a homeless home, befriends another man, brings them to Christ, brings them into Curcio, helps them. People think it's a simple story, but it's not because where Christ is looking, Christ is always looking at those that, that don't have a possibility to experience his love. And he's asking us to carry what we've received and in the spiritual life the greatest thing you can do is to offer yourself to receive christ's love i think it's very beautiful what what saint Teresa is saying there Uh, i just go back and, and and read you one thing that she's saying there um because it it really does it really does impact us you know um uh You permitted me, dear mother, to offer myself in this way to God. And you know that the rivers or rather the oceans of graces that have flooded my soul. Since that happy day, it seems to me that love penetrates and surrounds me. That at each moment, this merciful love renews me, purifying my soul and leaving no trace of sin within it. I need not fear. I need not. I need have no fear of purgatory. I know that of myself I would not merit even to enter that place of expiation since only holy souls have can have entrance there. But I also know that the fire of love is more sanctifying than the fire of purgatory. I know that that Jesus cannot desire useless sufferings for us and that he would not inspire the longings I feel unless he wanted to grant them to us. Something very strange happened on on Saturday and I'm just going to kind of, (laughs) this is bizarre, bizarre coincidence of coincidence. When we're doing the School of Mary, both Jeanne and myself, we do two recordings so that we have them as recordings to go forward. And Jeanne was talking about um, the Holy Spirit, you know, the, the God, the importance of the Holy Spirit. And was, he was giving us a magnificent talk. And I was saying to myself, I'm going to talk to Jean afterwards and I'm going to ask his permission to use part of this recording and to put it on my channel to do an episode. Anyway, after the end of the hour, uh, uh, we, for whatever reading I hadn't, reason, I hadn't recorded it. And I said to Jeanne, you know this recording? And and then Jeanne says, well, look, there's a bit of it that is missing, that the, the audio is gone or whatever. We w- Both of us didn't have any recordings of this, this beautiful talk that he gave us on Saturday. Really, really, really captivated my imagination. And the strange thing is, when he's talking, all I can see is this image in my mind. All I can see, kept seeing Elizabeth Kendall, uh, um, you know, the flame of love. And then I'm just trying to say, oh, hold on a second. Well, Jeanne is here talking about the Holy Spirit, the importance of, you know, invoking the Holy Spirit, you know, if, uh, uh, explain to us to do the novena to the Holy Spirit. Uh, really, uh, you know, because we're doing the firm foundations of the spiritual life and he was focusing on this subject, which I thought was beautiful. It was absolutely riveting <laughs> what he was talking to me about, to us about and uh, but the whole time 
uh, The Flame of Love, Elizabeth Kindleman kept coming to my mind. Now, I went home and I read the book and I'm saying, isn't this devotion, um, you know, as she says, uh, Satan intensifies his efforts to ruin souls. His eternal opponent is the most blessed Virgin Mary. She obtained from the Father the merits of the passion of her most holy Son. An outpouring of grace is so great as has not existed since the, world be the Word became flesh, in the words of our most holy Mother. She will bind Satan with the flame of love. And I mean, they're trying to correlate what Jeanne is trying to say to us about the, the Holy Spirit and what Elizabeth Elizabeth Kindleman is saying with the with the with the flame of love. And but then when you read this act of oblation that we're making ourselves with the, that that Saint Therese of of Lazieux is asking us to make, which we should all do. We should all be there to receive Christ's love. Here I am, Lord. You know, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is fear of God. What is fear of God? It's a deep friend. It's a gift of love. You know, so the gift of fear of God is a gift of love. We, we, it's kind of counterintuitive. But it, it, to have that gift is, is actually to have a, the gift of love, of loving God. You know, <laughs> it's a gift of friendship. I, 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 you know, I'm, 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 I'm your friend, Robert, and I give you this gift. You know, of all the different gifts of the Holy Spirit, and some of us are very poor at, at uh, accepting these gifts and 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 making them manifest in our life. But, um, I suppose what I'm trying to say is Saint Therese captures this 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 beautiful gift for us, and uh, and I do encourage people to go and to make that act of oblation. And I'm just going to put a link below uh, to it and, and, and encourage everybody. Anyway, God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.